Welcome to MCC this morning, especially any visitors we may have. Um, if you wouldn't mind, if everyone could go ahead and stand up as we get ready to worship here this morning. I wanted to kick us off with just a simple encouragement. And this is just an encouragement that we put both feet in as we're worshiping Jesus. Um, if you're like me, um, you kind of always have this one foot firmly planted in God. That's a good thing. Uh, but there are times when maybe this other foot gets kind of stuck in the world. And what you'll feel is in this straddle, you've kind of got this downward current of the world, yet this peaceful upward current of God. But you might be spinning around a little bit, wondering why you're not firmly planted in this peace of God. So when I was thinking about an illustration of that in the Bible, Peter came to mind. We can all appreciate Peter and the, the disciple he was. And in Matthew 14, he is out there on the boat with his disciples. It's storming, and Jesus walks up on the water. And it was Peter who said, Jesus, call to me. And he had to put both feet in the water. He did, I don't get the impression he was testing the water and keeping one here in the boat. I get the impression that he was both feet in the water. And even when he doubted, God was there because he was both feet in the water, but God was there. So I'm going to close with this verse in Proverbs. This is Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lead not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Jesus, thank you for being unwavering and trustworthy. We choose to be both feet in this morning as we worship you. Amen. Yes, 
Spirit, we thank you. We thank you for what you're doing in this room. I just feel as we're worshiping this morning that um, there are people that maybe have a physical need, but I just really feel like the Lord wants to touch uh, anyone here with a shoulder or back problems. If that's you, would you raise your hand right where you are? Shoulder or back problems? I can't really see you. Okay, I see one hand. Anybody? Okay. All right. I want you to look around. If, if you got your hand in worship, you put them down. But if you, you have, if you have a shoulder or back problem, I just feel like the Lord wants to touch those of you who have an issue with shoulder or back problems, especially shoulder problems this morning. Yeah, this back there, Andrew, and back there, Hank, back there. Yeah. Would you, Matt? back there. Would you surround these precious dear ones? Would you do that? We're just going to pray and believe that God is going to touch our friends and family members today. Yeah. Shoulder or back problems. I've been feeling that the whole service. Was that you sister as well? Yeah, right here. Back there, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, everybody else, just worship. Just worship. Just pray. Just ask the Lord. Just ask the Lord to intervene right now. The presence of God is in this place. It's not anything that we do, but we know that God wants to touch lives, and He wants to touch those who have sickness and issues physically. The Bible tells us that God still today heals. He heals. Thank you, Father. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus for my precious brothers and sisters. Lord, your word reminds us that one member suffers, we all suffer. And if a member of the body suffers, we all feel the pain and the discomfort of that 
member of the body that suffers. But Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus this morning that you will touch these precious brothers and sisters. Lord, I ask you that you open up the windows of heaven and release an anointing of healing over their bodies right now. Lord, I speak to right shoulders, left shoulders, lower back, any part of the back. In the name of Jesus, release the healing virtues of Jesus right now. Lord, we know in your word, your word declares that you went about doing good and healing all manners of sickness and disease. We stand on the promise of your word today. On the promise of your word. Thank you for touching. Thank you for healing right shoulders, left shoulder, back problems. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the Spirit of God to just touch my brothers and sisters right now. In Jesus' name. Oh, have your way, have your way. Come on, sing it. Sing it with Aaron. Have your way.
Jesus. Jesus, your name is power.
Mm. Adoration. What a word. What a word. We adore you. Lord, we adore you. Worthy of our adoration, Lord. On the mountaintop, in the valley. Lord, we adore you. God, Lord, we adore you. Cheryl and I, and I were had been blessed to have four children. And you know, when those little ones are born, you adore them. You just adore them, precious little babies born from God, given from God. And as we raise them through the years, we prayed for them. We wanted the most for them and the best for them. We love them. We even discipline them in our love. We prayed. And what I want to share with all of us this morning, we talked about the throne room. Jesus seated at the right hand of God. He loves us. He prays for us. He intercedes for us. He wants the best for every one of us. He wants the best for his church. He paid the ultimate price to adore us, to intercede for us, to want the best for us. had a tremendous time of prayer this morning. Tremendous time with words of truth. Truth that you can stand on like the rock. The truth of intercession, of binding and loosening of prayer. The truth of the power of the resurrection. I've prayed for years and asked God to help me understand the power of the resurrection. Just think about that for a moment. The power to overcome death. The power to resurrect. To loose the shackles. To open the prison doors. The power of that. Not just words not just a rogue Sunday service, the living word of God, the power of the resurrection. David shared that we we came here this morning. We have options. We could sleep in. We could do something else, go have a coffee. And coming to the body sometimes can get casual, comfortable, repeatable. It's a duty and it's it's okay because we should come together. But these are precious moments to adore the Lord, to reflect on the power of the resurrection, to start again if we're flame is fluttering a little bit. So I invite all of us this morning in lieu of this incredible time of worship, if we adore him, we will yield. We will have a contrite heart. We would be a willing vessel to adore him in words and in deeds.
MCC. My name is Hanli. I'm the children's ministry coordinator here. If I haven't met you, um, I would love to. Just find me any Sunday. I'm usually in the back or in the lobby. Um, any new time visitors that's here for the first time, guys, can we put a hand together and just welcome them? And thank you for being with us this morning. On your way in, you might have um, received a Connect card. If you haven't, if you would just put your hand up so the ushers can spread those out. Um, put your email there so we can put you on the weekly email list so you can stay up to date on upcoming events. After you fill it out, you can just put it in the offering at the end or drop it in the Connect area on your way out. And now, today we're going to do something a little different with the kids, but the kids, if you guys can all come to the front, um, we're going to ask each and every kids volunteer to stand up, even if you're currently not serving, um, if you're on break, if you're a student leader, please stand up, if you volunteer for the new family greeters, um, we would love to just honor you guys this morning. And I'm going to ask, once the kids are up here, if they can help me. <laughs> can, can kids, can you each grab one or two of these little cards, these little gifts, and go hand them to all the people that's standing? Give one to every person. And when you receive one, just sit down. <laughs> Thank you. Standing up. Yes. Thank you. If, you. if there's still more people standing. I think there's some in the back. If you haven't received one, can you put your hand up? Okay. It looks like that was everyone. Um, you can just put it back in... Just put it back in the basket. Okay. Oh, thank you. Um, we wanted to say just a special thank you to our volunteers. Um, honestly, I don't think we can have an MCC without a kids at MCC. And we cannot have a kids at MCC without these volunteers. And um, we appreciate you. We appreciate your time. So, so, so much, guys. Um, there's, yeah, it's just, it's a blessing and an honor to um, work with each of you, and we appreciate you. We love you. We're praying for you guys. Um, if anyone else is interested to volunteer, there, there's a need, right? So um, we would love to have you. Um, next, we're going to ask someone to pray for us, and then we'll dismiss the kids. If you can just, parents, if you can just give the volunteers just a, a couple extra moments to get to the classrooms um, when you escort them out. Thank you. Silas, are you, you want to pray? Still pray? Okay. Nobody sit yet. You want to say prayer? Nobody sit yet. Okay, okay. All right. You want to pray? Peace. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else? Prayer, prayer. All right, Lord. Oh, there's, okay. Who's going to go? Isla? Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for all you have done. Please help anyone who is sick or hurt or in the hospital right now, Lord. Thank you for all you have done. Thank you for this beautiful day. In Jesus' name we pray in your name, amen.
Amen. All right, kids, you can be dismissed. If um, you guys can take just a moment to say hello to your neighbors, greet them, and welcome any new faces, introduce yourself. Thank you. All right, guys, looks like the kids are getting in. If you can find your way back to your seat. Thank you. Okay, we have a couple of other announcements real quick this morning. There are some slides for it, I believe. Um, the young adults are having a game night next Saturday, April 20th, here at church. If you would like some more information, please reach out to Joe or Tessa. Um, for Love Life, we have the Love Life Prayer Walk, Saturday, April 27th, from 9 to 10.30. Uh, please sign up for that. You can use the QR code, and I believe there's a short video to show. When I grow up, I want to change the world. While I'm working on the coffee and world peace, I would own a candy shop. You can do all this. I can give the candy to everyone, and you get all your butter and your data. You can play your toys all day. Wow, that, that touched me. Um, yeah, just sign up for the, the prayer walk, please, guys. It's a very important um, movement. And now if the ushers could get ready for the offering, we'll take a few moments. Just, there's five ways to give now. Um, the non-cash offer option for stocks or cryptocurrency, things like that. Thank you. Pray? Pray now, now? Okay, let me pray now. <laughs> ah, Father God, um, thank you for blessing us. Thank you for 
providing for us and everything that we have, everything that we get to do, get to be a part of God. Um, lead us as we give back to you. Um, God, I pray that you would lead us in using these offerings to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. And I'm going to close with a quick scripture. Um, it's very, very quick. All right. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Amen. Hey, can we just give Jesus some thanks for the way he met with us and ministered to us in worship? <clears throat> I feel like we are a church, but I want to just continue to be a church that goes back. You know, the lepers asked for healing. They went away. He did it. Only one returned. Um, and so I want to be the church that comes back and says, thank you, Jesus. We asked for that. Thank you for meeting with us. Uh, really thankful for this church and how Jesus is gracious. Never want to take that for granted, the presence. Um, so I just got a couple quick things to walk through. I've mentioned one of them before, and I want to bring next one. So... Next weekend, April 21st, we're going to have a new group leader interest meeting. In our community groups ministry, we just need more groups, but we're not trying to fill uh, this. I'm not trying to be, this just came to my mind. I'm not, this sounds a little cheesy. Morning. I'm not trying to fill a quota. We're trying to release a calling. That sounds a little, I, I didn't, that just came to me. Sorry, it's a little cheesy. But we're not, but we're not trying to, you know, it's not like we have, we're trying to do four more groups. No, it's just that maybe the Holy Spirit out there has a, put it on the hearts of a handful of couples to, to step out. And that's all, that's our only agenda. Holy Spirit, what do you have? Let's release that. I have specifically in my heart and mind, if you are someone, you've been through some things, you've been through some seasons of suffering You've been through some, some kind of cycles of ministry, and you're at a time where you're like, ah, it's time to rest. Well, maybe this is actually the time to pour out. This is the time to overflow. You're most primed to release um, into the rising generation. So if the Lord's giving you that call, it's not a commitment. I'm not going to have you sign on anything. I just want to hear what God has on your heart. Next, next weekend, we'll spend some time in the prayer room. So it's a new group leader's interest meeting, not commitment night, not commitment morning, low pressure, just come on out. And I'd love to, and if anything, we just hear what God has on your heart. And if it's not a new group, maybe it's something else. Um, and that leads into uh, May 5th, we're going to have a connect class. Now, historically, we've done this uh, every three or four months, and it's a long lunch. We really go deep. We're, we're trying to switch this up just because we have a lot of new people flooding into the church on a monthly basis. So what we're going to be trying out is on the first Sunday of every month, just having a little bit of a shorter, low-key time in the back room right back there. Um, it's the Focus Classroom or the Young Adults Classroom. We'll put out signs on May 5th to indicate uh, where it is and when it is. But we're going to be having a monthly connect time, and it, here's our kind of commitment to you. It's going to be 30 minutes right after the service. We'll give you a little snack to, like, carry you over into lunch for your hungry stomach. But we're, it's going to be really quick. And the, the big uh, part of Connect Class, this is, this is who it's for. If you're in here, and maybe this is week one, or you've been here for a little bit, and you've been attending, just kind of showing up and sitting down, we're so glad you're here. But there's just more for you. There's more for you. And again, just like I said about the community group interest meeting, we're, as you come into the Connect class, we're going to share a little bit about mission, but we're not going to give you the sales pitch into our agenda. Our big agenda in this church is just to hear what God is doing in your heart and help you take the next step with the Spirit of Jesus. So would you come, if you, if you have not connected to the church and you want to hear more about what God is doing, more so, we want to hear about what God is doing in your life May 5th, it's going to be after the service right back there. We're going to have a good time. Please come out. Um, you, can, you can let us know by emailing me or going to our church's website to kind of sign up. But you can also just show up on the 5th, come back there, and we'd love to connect with you. I believe I'm handing it off now to Joe and Davey if you want to come up. They're going to share a little bit about the worship and tech team. There they are. All right. Thank you, guys.
Hey, uh, my name is Davey Kolk. I'm the music director here, um, and this is Joe. He's the creative director. We're just, we just want, want to invite y'all, if you are a musician, a singer, you're interested in uh, tech or video or something, um, to just come and talk to us after the service or after any service. Um, we'll be willing to talk to you. We just want to help grow the team with people that are... Uh, excited to, to be a part of the team and to and be good worshipers and just kind of help lead, lead us all and help make the service happen. Um, now, there is an audition to be on the music team. It's not anyone who just played recorder in fifth grade, um, but we, we are we we're willing to, to help and coach and teach. Um, so if you're just at all interested, we would just love it if you guys would come and talk to us. And uh, I don't know if you noticed these cool hats that we have. You might, you might have seen them uh, throughout. And uh, so that's one of the perks of joining the, the AV or the worship or creative team. Exclusive merch right here. So that's, that's like, uh, if you want, you want this, you got to join the AV. Oh, you got to join the worship, creative, and, and, and tech teams. Thank you, guys. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I mean, unless you want to buy a hat, that would be like $45 a person, a hat. I'm just kidding. Just, just kidding. Hey, we're so blessed. Oh, by the way, David, I'm sorry, but your recorder playing is just not going to cut it for the worship team. That's you, David. <laughs> You're happy about that? Okay, all right. Yeah, I guess I'm disappointed about my recorder playing in fifth grade. I. Have you ever played recorder in fifth grade? Yeah, look at look at all those hands. That's a big band right there, Davey. Look. Man, that would be horrible. <laughs> hey, we're just so excited. I don't know if you noticed, if you're new here, uh, but we're a family, and we all participate and do things and stuff today. And today, uh, come on up, my brother. Uh, my brother Keith Chandler is going to come and share the word. Yeah. Now, let me just say just one thing about my my brother is that uh, we are a church that believes in the power of prayer, right? Yeah. And um, and we've had that connection from the very start. And uh, back, I guess, a few months now, quite a few months, uh, Keith came up and said, hey, I want to really start like, you know, it's great on Tuesday. Can I do prayer on, uh, on Friday morning? And so, you know, seven to eight, Keith and his son, Jake, Woo, Jake, uh, they both bring their guitar and they worship and pray together. That's just wonderful. That's an extra space and environment. And then, you know, we were talking about, hey, you know what? God wants to move in our city and in this world. Can we pray for revival and awakening? Yes, we can do that. Well, why don't we start something on a Sunday morning? So every Sunday morning, 8 to 8.30, we're here. And this brother comes and he sets the chairs. He sets the place. It's not just talk. It's talk and action. And so what you're hearing today is from a, a man of God that I've grown to love and respect and call my friend. And uh, I'm excited to hear the word of the Lord today. So bless my brother Keith. Will you one more time? How kind. What, um, what a privilege to be able to come and, and share the word of God with, with people and and I, don't I told David, I go, I don't take this lightly. This is, uh, matter of fact, uh, the Bible even says, I, I wish that not many of you would be teachers because with that comes a, a high form of responsibility. And, and I've got to be honest with you, I, I, throughout my Christian life, I didn't necessarily take it that serious. Um, but it, as I'm getting older, it's becoming more and more in fear and trembling, and my wife reminds me quite often how, how important it is and how big of a responsibility it is. So I'm going to just pray and ask God to, to guide and direct this time. And so, Lord, we just thank you for who you are. And God, I pray that, that you would guide and direct this message and let it be your words for us, your people. God, guide, direct, and let your word cut to our hearts. God, straight between soul and spirit to the very depths of our being that we would, God, be changed for your glory and honor. Amen. 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 What an honor. What an honor. Thank you again. Um, you have a bright light. 
I'm not used to that. It's like, ah, there's a bunch of spots out there. When I, and I just looked at the light. That was not a great idea. But, um, but, but it, it, you know, uh, have you ever had one of those times in your Christian walk, if you're a Christian, if you're following Jesus, where, where things were happening, and all of a sudden it took a turn, and you're sitting there going, what happened? Like, like God, I don't understand. Like, I thought we were on this track, and all of a sudden it flipped. That happened um, right when I was about 30 years of age. God opened up a door for me and my wife to go into full-time ministry, and I had a good career. Um, I was managing supermarkets, doing quite well, and things were going good, and, but I had, we just had a heart to serve the Lord, and the church that we were going to basically said, look, we want you to come on staff as associate pastors. So we prayed about it and, and just felt God leading. So we, it's like, yes, let's make that happen. And, and that was in early 90s, late 89, something like that. And about two years later, uh, a deep recession happened, especially in California in the area we were at. And uh, the church said, we would love to keep you on staff. We just can't pay you anymore. And, uh, and since I had two young kids, all of a sudden, I, w- I, I remember sitting there going, God, what happened? What happened? And then I'm reminded of a verse that helps me. It's Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. He goes, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And that's a tough one. And I'll be honest with you, it took a long time for what happened uh, to us in, in that time. It was a tough time for about three years. There was a lot of stuff going on. And, and now I look, and it's like, God, you used all those things in our life to get us to where we're at, and I would not change that for anything. But didn't mean it was, it felt like a detour, and God's like, no, that's not a detour. That's actually the road I've got you on. It just feels like a detour. So since that verse is true, it should not surprise us that the ways of the kingdom of God are so different than the ways of the kingdom of this world. We are living in the kingdom of this world, but there is a greater kingdom that overarches the whole thing. It's called the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God rules the universe and beyond, and there is a kingdom of the world that, that's sort of over this. So the kingdom of God overarches that, but there is a kingdom of this world, and the ways that God operates so different, so incredibly different. Matter of fact, that's one of the reasons why Jesus was so misunderstood. Jesus was and is the king of a completely different kingdom. He was and is the king of the kingdom of God. And he entered the kingdom of this world. But he did not bow to the kingdom of this world. So he surprised everybody. They were not what he was expecting. When his ministry began, it was interesting, he began um, 30 years in almost obscurity. We, we don't know a lot about what happened there. We have a few little glimpses there. But then 30 years, he comes on the scene. John the Baptist, his cousin, had come on the scene a little earlier and started baptizing and proclaiming, repent, for the kingdom of heaven's at hand. He goes, but I'm going to, he goes to prepare the way for the one coming after him. And it just so happens, one coming after him was his cousin Jesus, who just happened to be the son of God. So John the Baptist, Jesus comes to him, John the Baptist baptizes him. And he was a little reluctant. He goes, look, I know you're the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I should not be baptizing you. You should be baptizing me. And Jesus said, let it happen this way so all righteousness will be fulfilled. Basically, John, just do this. So he did it, 
Jesus goes out into the desert 40 days, 40 nights, eats nothing. He's tempted by Satan and comes back in the power of the Spirit. And the next three years, we're going to rock this world. Those next three years changed the world forever. And he said in Mark 1, 14 through 15, because now after John had been taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God's at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The kingdom of God was at hand. That, it's interesting. That was the same message that John came preaching. But John was proclaiming that Jesus was the king of that kingdom. So it shouldn't have surprised them that things were going to look a lot different when Jesus came. He's, he was not at all what they expected. Very, very different. Because he's the king of a different kingdom. So throughout, throughout those following three years, he rocked the world with the things he did. He did things that had never been done before. Crazy things. People who were born blind. He made mud, put on the eyes, he goes, go wash, come back, and they're seeing. And it said, the guy himself said, never has it been heard that somebody born blind would receive their sight. The king of the universe, that was nothing to him. But they're like, this doesn't happen. His disciples saw crazy stuff. His disciples saw him walking on water. By the way, it looks like about four miles. Now, I, you know, I get tired even you know, walking a mile. Little, I don't know, what's it like to walk on water for four miles? But, but he did that. And then when he's enter, he brings it into the boat, immediately it's on the other side. That's what John says. So I, I don't even know what that looked like. That could have been a fun story for them, right? And, and there, was, there was a crowd of probably fifteen to 20,000 people. It said 5,000 men, not including women and children. And they're like, these guys are hungry. Let's feed them. And it's like, let's go to Chipotle and order out for 15,000 people. Now, and Jesus goes, well, what just would he have? And they said, well, we, we have a boy here with a little lunch, five loaves and a few small fish. He goes, that's enough. <laughs> right? His disciples are going, well, you probably need to do a better head count. <laughs> right? And he blessed it. And it said that they all had their fill. And there were some left over. He actually did that one twice because evidently I think they just didn't get it the first time. But not only did he rock the world with the things that he did, but he also rocked the world with the things he taught. One of the things that Jesus did, he not only performed the works of the kingdom of God, but then he taught them what the kingdom of God was like. And believe me, it was a lot different than people thought it would be. They thought it would just be an enhanced form of the kingdom of the world. And Jesus goes, not at all. This is a completely different kingdom, a completely better kingdom, but way different. So some of his teachings look like this. It says, if you want to be great, you must become last and servant of all. In Mark 9, 35, sitting down, he called the 12 and he said to them, if anyone wants to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. That makes no sense, doesn't it? Does that make any sense in the way of the world? The way of the world goes, you want to be great, stomp on people, walk on people, do whatever you can to get up there. And the kingdom of God goes, no, no, be a servant. Yeah. Next. Oh, by the way, love your enemies and pray for them. <laughs> in Matthew 5, 43 and 44, because you've heard it said you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say you love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. By the way, hate your enemies is not in the Bible. That was a miscorrect addition to the way they viewed love your neighbor. They thought, well, love your neighbor, but these people who are doing bad to me hate them. And 
And Jesus goes, no, that's not the way it works. Not only do you need to love them, but pray for them. Wow. Next. So if you want to really be wealthy, you know what you need to do? Invest. Scrimp, save, and, and put it in a good mutual fund. No, he goes, if you want to have true wealth, sell your possessions, give to the poor. Luke 12, sell your possessions, give to charity. Make yourself money belts that do not wear out. An unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near nor moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That made no sense, right? Because the Pharisees at that time, there was a lot of money-hungry grabbing thing and and they did not love that. But, but Jesus is like, you don't understand the way the true kingdom works. And then this next one. If you want to follow Jesus, you must deny yourself, take up your cross daily. And he was saying to them all in Luke 9, 23 through 25, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Forever wishes to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake, he's the one who will save it. For what is a man to profit if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Wow. Those were some crazy revelations. And got to be honest with you, a lot of people were like, I don't know if I like this kingdom. It's a little upside down. I got to be servant. I got to be giving. I got to be praying for those enemies. And oh, by the way, carry your cross. So he was not necessarily giving the message of popularity, but it's the message of truth. That's the way the kingdom of God really works. Matter of fact, his greatest revelation he was going to give them towards the end of his life, that revelation is when the king of this kingdom, the kingdom of God, he took up his cross. And he gave his life gave his life for all our sins, you, me, everyone here, and for the sins of the world. That's not what a king does, but that is what the king of the kingdom of God does. But thank God he was risen from the grave three days later, but he took up his cross. Wow, what a different kingdom. So we're going to go back to, uh, to, to that verse right there. Um, I didn't realize this. I knew that that's significant, right? To, that's, a, that's powerful, right? To, to give up your life and to, to, to seek the, the kingdom of God first. But I didn't realize that, you know, this teaching is the most prevalent teaching in all the Gospels of Jesus. No other teaching is touched as much as this. This is actually referred to six times in the four Gospels. Six times. That's a lot. That must mean something. Not only is it six times, a lot of times, right, there's four Gospels, you're like, well, they just repeated the things. You ready for this? It was four separate incidences. Four. I'm like, wow, that teaching is incredibly important. That, that teaching, if you want to save your life, you've got to lose it. But if you lose your life for Jesus and the gospel, you'll save it. Incredible. Amazing. Wow. Yeah, when I looked at that, I'm like, I'm like yeah, this, uh, maybe, maybe I'll, Maybe we are on to something, right? This is really important. So I started thinking, so what does it mean to die daily? What, what's that all about? Well, there's two battles that we face. So we're going to take a little detour over here real quick. So there's two battles that the Bible, uh, New Testament especially, seems to highlight. Um, one is the external spiritual battle, and then there's the internal battle. Um, the external battle is explained in Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. 
Put on the full armor of God so you'll be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against powers, against the world forces of darkness, against spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. There is an outward battle going on in the spirit realm. However, there's times it feels like that battle's taking place inside. Has anybody ever felt that? Where you're like, wow, that, that spiritual force comes, right? But then there's the second battle. And that second battle is the internal battle. The flesh, the sin nature versus the spirit. So Galatians talks all about that. Goes by, say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. For the flesh sets itself against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. But if you are led by the Spirit of God, you are not under law. Next. Now the deeds of the flesh are evident which are immorality, impurity, sexuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissension, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. You guys get the idea? Yeah. Right? Things like these, of which I forewarn you, just as I have forewarned you before, that those who practice those things, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, because against such things there is no law. Those are the, by the way, those are the things that come out of the two kingdoms. That first list is what comes out of the kingdom of the world. That second list is the things that come out of the kingdom of God. There is that internal battle, and there's that struggle. And and that's a tough one. Really is. The, the, fle- the battle of the flesh is really the, it's, I, I used to think, well, that was the fallen sinful nature, which I think it is, enhanced. But my wife and I were talking yesterday, and, and I thought, you know, it's weird. It, so this is, I, I'm not even sure what to do with this, so I'll, I'll put this out, and I know my wife's going, don't say it. <laughs> no. <laughs> but this is interesting, right? is so Adam and Eve, right? They're perfect, sinless, right? But somehow, there w- this, the serpent, Satan, knew that there was a part of them that wanted to be king of their own life, wanted to sit on their own throne. That's, that's not part of a fallenness, right? I, if it was, then they wouldn't have had that. That couldn't even been a temptation for them. I know, hmm, I'm with you. I was like, hmm. I'm, but then again, Satan was tempted with the same thing, and he was perfect. There is something that, right, we want to be the king of our own kingdom. We want to sit on our own throne. Jesus, you know, sit over here in the, in the passenger seat. And he's like, that's not how I work. If I'm getting in your car, I'm getting the steering wheel, period. Um, those who know me, I sort of am like the same thing. Right? If, I, if we're going anywhere, I'm driving. It's just, just the way it goes. Um, not that I'm comparing myself with Jesus. You want Jesus driving your car, uh, no doubt. But um, so, so what it's about, though, is it's about really surrender. Right? It, it's about saying, I, by the way, I uh, give you a, a quick story of my conversion. I was, uh, I was probably about 18, had, have not been a good king of my life yet. I pretty much was screwing it up really good. Doing all the things the flesh wanted to do, but it was not producing wonderful fruit in my life. And at the same time, though, I was raised as a Christian. So, so I thought, you know what? There's some cute girls at church, and I want to meet them more, so I'm going to go to church camp. So I went to a church camp. God had a different idea. I was 18 years old. I can't really tell you what that was other than, what it was all about other than he, he I had an encounter with Jesus that changed my life. And I was not doing good stuff. So I was living in this world full on. And when I came down from that mountain, I knew. I knew. 
get in this world. Like, it was, it was so interesting. The Holy Spirit guided and directed me all the things I needed to do, and I had no idea what I needed to do. He's like, you know, man, spend time in my word. Spend time with me. Spend time with, with your Christian brothers and sisters. And, and the funny, this was the funny part, um, is I was already signed up to go to Bible college in my heathen days. My dad actually told me, he goes, look, you're making good money. You're, you're working hard. I graduated for a year already. He goes, if you don't start going to college, I'm going to charge you rent. Well, I liked my money. So I thought, well, I know what I'll do. I had a guy I was stocking groceries with, and, and he would always talk about a Bible college he was going to. I'm like, I could do Bible college. You just sit around and read the Bible, right? So I'm like, I like those stories. I can ace this, right? No clue. So I had signed up to go to Bible college, and I'm doing all the worldly stuff. But God had his timing. I came down from the mountain, and I think two or three weeks later, I was in Bible college. I'm like, wow. God's thoughts aren't ours. His ways aren't ours. But man, he lines things up. But, but there was a, I knew there was a transfer from one kingdom to the other. Um, and I do know that there's some of us out here who, who are, are battling. And it's so funny. Andrew shared this. I'm like, dude, it looked like you looked at my notes. Feet in both worlds. Did you remember him saying that? If you were here early enough for him on the opening? He said that. I, I'm like, that's it. That, if you're struggling, you have feet in both worlds. Where you know there's a, you have feet over here in, in the kingdom of the world, but you also, man, I want to serve God. I have, I have my feet over here in the kingdom of God, but it will, by the way, inadvertently, other struggles that came from my poor choices as a young man continued on for quite a season in my married life, and, and I was getting ripped apart. I had, some, I had a little bit of me over here in the world and some over here in Jesus and in the kingdom of God. It will tell you apart. I am here to tell you, if that's where you're living, I have such compassion for you because I truly wanted to serve God completely. But the enemy does not give up, and your flesh does not give up easily. It will go down kicking and screaming, and the f I found out something. My flesh, my sinful nature, it does not care about me. It doesn't. It cares about it. It's like, it, it's like give me what I want right now. I don't care about consequences. I don't care what it does to your life tomorrow. That's, that's the sinful nature. That's the flesh that, that's talking about in Galatians. It doesn't care about you. And once that realization came, it's like, wow, I really need to work very hard on getting my feet out of the kingdom of this world because it's going to destroy me. That's the battle. And there's a great lie the great lie is if you decide to live your life for Jesus and for the kingdom of God, your life will be miserable. Right? Have you ever heard that or have you ever thought that? It's like, well, this dying to self doesn't sound like a lot of fun. The other, another lie, your life will be void of any pleasure or fulfillment. However, this is the great truth. The most fulfilling life you could ever live is the life you were designed to live, living for Jesus. We were designed to live in the kingdom of God from day one. We were designed for that. The problem is we were born into the kingdom of the world. <laughs> so we need to be born again. To transfer, to, that's what Jesus was talking about Nicodemus. You need to be born again so you can get into the kingdom of God. The other truth is when you live your life to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and to love your neighbors as yourself, you will worry less and less and less and less about yourself. It takes time, though, because the flesh likes itself. The flesh wants to take care of itself. 
But over time, over time, that battle gets easier. It, it will never disappear until we die. But the battle gets less and less and less because as we surrender, as we give our lives into the kingdom of God and, and the spirit of God, that part of us gets stronger. So that battle gets easier. But how do you make sure that you stay strong? So this is a truth about the king. Uh, no, you're, 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 uh, no, keep going. You're right. So the truth is the kingdom of this world, you live and then you die. And the truth about the kingdom of God, you die and then you will truly live. You die and then you're true. That is the truth. I can honestly tell you, and I'm just on the road to beginning to die to self. There's still a lot of, you ask my family who's back there, love you guys. Um, they can tell you, um, he's not all dead. <laughs> right? They have, a, they have a part of me they call big face. Um, people, right, people would, uh, you know, when they, uh, they'd go to school and they'd go, oh, they called me Mr. Smiley. Oh, Mr. Smiley, your dad's so nice. And they go, you just haven't met big face. <laughs> and I can't do it on command anymore because I just start laughing. But there's a part of me that wants to rear up. And, uh, but big face needs to die. <laughs> big face needs to die. Um, so, so what's interesting is, is I'm here to talk to you a little bit about so how do we win the battle? How do we win the battle? And, and to die to self, it's going to look different for all of us. There are certain things that I think will look similar. But I think there are certain things that will look a lot different. But I believe the battle. But from my own experience and from talking to others and, and, and you know, after trying, trying to live this Christian life for 45 years, um, sometimes doing it well, sometimes not so well at all. Um, I believe the battle is won in the secret place. In the secret place. When I was in ministry, it was so interesting, I got too busy for the secret place. That's not good. That's not good. We can get so busy doing all the good things that we forget, and what I mean the secret place is, is uh, getting up and hanging out with Jesus. Just having conversation. God, yeah, thank you for all you've done for me today. God, thank you for, for my wife, for my kids, for where I'm at, for the home you've given me, for the food you give me. I appreciate you, God. Thank you for saving me. Speak to me, let me know, God, what you would, where you'd have me go, what you'd have me do. And then there's the secret place where you, you take the word of God. And you open it up. And the problem is, I, I had a, a passion and desire for the word of God. But the problem is, my passion and desire in the word of God was to know the word, not know the king of the word. And that's huge. That's... That's a giant difference. You need, we need to know the author of the word. We need to know the king of the word. So next slide. So read the, if you can, my encouragement to you, read the word daily to get to know who Jesus is. But that's the reason. It's to go, God, who are you? I always do that now to the, you know, just show me who you are. Show me who you are in these pages. Let me get a revelation of who you are. And and it's interesting, he does that. He starts revealing himself to you, and that's exciting. Right. I'll tell you, God is so loving, so caring, so kind, so amazing, so compassionate. And, and it's there, it's throughout the pages of Scripture. And then, if you can't, you know, try to start the day by just conversing with God. And some of you probably exercise and run and do all sorts of stuff. You can do that while you're running. My mind does not do two things at once very well at all. 
So if I start running, and I, oh, dear Lord, look at, oh, the trees, and there's a bird in those trees. Right, I need dark, quiet, because I'm too bunny, I bunny trail all over the place. Um, and other, uh, it's in, if you take time to pray for the needs of others, you re- that helps you die to self. And also, it starts increasing your love for others. Because it says where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. And last of all, set time for prayer and fasting. Um, fasting is, I, 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 that was what initially I was going to teach on. Because my heart's in there. I'm, not a, this, I'm a good person to teach about prayer and fasting because I'm not great at it. Right? You don't want the guy who's like, yeah, I've just got done with a 180-day fast. You know? <laughs> you know, you don't want that. You want the person who goes, yeah. Wow, after two days, I started, like, chewing on the wood on my, you, you know? You want that person, right? Somebody who can, like, go, okay. Right, I can, I can relate to that. But, but I can, I'm going to show you a, a brief story. Um, is what was, what was uh, a, f- a friend of mine, he shared this with me 15 years ago. Uh, he had, 16 years ago, he had a teenage son who was wandering away from the Lord. And, and uh and he said, I came to him and said, hey, how about if we just start praying and fasting about him? I, I don't remember this, but Joe, he, he did. And so we, we started doing that. And within about six months, the kid turned around. He started seeking Jesus, started attending youth group, just really got on fire for the Lord. But the, the amazing part of this story is about five months later, he got killed in a car accident. Whoa, God, you are so good. You are so good. That's still a tough story, but he's in heaven. He's in heaven. God does amazing things. So I would like the ministry team to come up, if you would, and, and uh, take your places. Because... Uh, what I want to talk about at the very end is, is it back to what I talked about on the, the feet in, in two kingdoms. If you're there, cause, cause, and I do believe this, this message is from somebody who, who still, they're just full on in the kingdom of the world and needs Jesus, or somebody who's been serving Jesus for 50 years, but somehow... There's a part of the kingdom of the world that just won't leave or it came back or whatever. If you're in any of those spots and you just need somebody to, to pray with you, to, to, to join with you and say, you know what, we're going to bind together with you. We're going to agree for God to give you the strength to, to go back to the secret place. I do think, I really believe, I think it's in the secret place. Every, all the books I read and all the people I talk to over the years, the foundation of our relationship with God is in the secret place. So if that's you and you need that, uh, we invite you during this last song to come up and, and to get prayed for and to get ministered to. Because I know one thing, God desires you to to straighten it up, to get it where you want it to be, where he wants it to be for you. And the best life you will ever, ever, ever live for now and eternity is full on in the kingdom of God. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. That's the best place to be. Full on in the kingdom of God. So Lord, we just ask that you would work on each one of us, work on our hearts, God, that you would, you would guide us and direct us. God, help all of us to get fully in the kingdom of God, to where we will, God, we can walk with you. We could be who you've created us to be. We could have the purpose that you created us for. So if you can stand while, while the worship team just sings the last song. And, and uh, God bless you guys. May you go in the peace and the love and the mercy of God. May, may you feel him, God, as the, as the 
as you go through your week. And once again, those who, who just need that ministry, come up and, and, and let God do a work in your life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Keith. Uh, as, as he was preaching, and I'm, if you need prayer right now, you just come on up. But as he was sharing, the verse in Matthew chapter 7 came to mind. It says, um, I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. It says, you can enter God's kingdom through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for so many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is a very narrow and the road is difficult and only if you enter it. And it reminded me of that, what he was mentioning about one foot in the world, one foot in the kingdom. Same kind of thing that Andrew shared at the beginning. Guys, you know where you're at in your spiritual walk with Jesus. I'm telling you right now, it, there's never a time to mess around and to, and to play around with God. But especially when God speaks through a message like this, it's definitely not a time to play around and mess with our eternal destiny. You say, like, well, I'm, I thought I was saved and, and I gave my heart to Jesus. Yes, but you know what? Um, do you want to be fulfilled in life? Do you want to have, like, a full life in God? You know, choose that narrow pathway into the kingdom of God. And it's going to be hard. And you might have to say no to certain things that you're used to. But you know what? God still wants to operate in your life. And so I want to pray. I'm going to pray and close the service. But for any of you that have, you're at a, perhaps at a, at a, at a junction, at a, at, a, at a point where you need to make a decision in your life. Should I serve God all the way? Do I go all the way in or do I kind of like keep on straddling the fence? You know what? We can't straddle the fence. God is calling us all the way in. So, Father, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that you work your purpose and your plan in the lives of your church today. Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you move and touch every heart. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's just worship together. And as we're worshiping, just feel free to come. And let's just receive from the Lord this morning. And oh, Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. No, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me. No, Christ be magnified. Let His praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. No, oh, Christ be magnified from the altar of my life. Christ be magnified in me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Father, thank you for your word today. I pray, Lord, that you will continue to speak into our hearts and challenge us to walk in the kingdom of God. Lord, to put both feet into the kingdom of God and to embrace the way of the kingdom. And embrace the way of God. Lord, help us not to be so self-focused that we neglect and we forget that you call us to 
a life that is different than what this world and this culture teaches us to live. You call us to deny ourselves. You call us to be servants of all. You call us to do things that we just don't get to hear all the time. Very seldom in this world. And so I pray in the name of Jesus that you will continue to move on our hearts. Thank you for your word. It gives life. And I pray that that life will bring fruit into each and every one of us today. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The altar still will remain open. Feel free to come. May the Lord bless you. We'll see you next Sunday.